Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay and welcome to my channel. This is Lindsay Likes Lit. We are wrapping up the month of April, finally going into the wonderful month of May. Before we go into May, we need to do a wrap up for the books that I read in April. I read four books in total in April and I'm going to put some stats on the screen over here so you can kind of see from story graph what was the general mood and amount of reading that I did in the month. Let me pause for a moment. It's probably good. Overall, the four books I read this month were dark, mysterious, tense, a little emotional, a little reflective, just a nice hodgepodge of all the things that I typically like to read. I primarily read, you know, literary, contemporary, but also I had a thriller in there. I had a horror book or what is classified as a horror book, but we'll get to that. And I think overall the range of what I read was somewhat diverse and very interesting. Something that happened this month was I ended up on a trial for jury duty. I had a lot of time to read. Most of the books I read were in that two week span of jury duty. You know, there's just a lot of time when you're in jury duty. There's a lot of breaks. It was quality reading time. I can't say I didn't enjoy the experience. It was, it was a nice break from regular life. My average rating this month was 4.19. So, you know, I think that kind of represents some of the five stars, almost five stars that I read, some of the th more three stars. So an average of 4.19 is pretty good overall. I'm happy with that. I'm solid with 4.19. That means I overall enjoyed pretty much everything I read. The first book I read in April, I was kind of finishing at the end of March, but I finished in uh, early April, was The Answers by Catherine Lacey. She's also the author of Biography of X and Pew, which I also have on my shelves. This book is published by Picador. It is my first Lacey. I will say it made me excited to read the others that I have on my shelf. I gave this book overall a four star rating, and I'll kind of get into what kept this from being a five star. But I would say this is, you know, contemporary fiction. It's kind of slow paced. I really did enjoy it overall. So a brief synopsis of this book. We follow Mary Parsons. She's broke. She's horribly in debt. She's falling apart from a bunch of mysterious illnesses that have no cure and no name. And she decides she needs to get a second job. So she applies for this strange experiment that's going on and she gets hired. She ends up being a girlfriend in the girlfriend experiment being put on by a famous actor of whom she knows nothing of because she essentially lives under a rock and the way she grew up was not very normal. And the book overall follows Mary in the first and third acts and in the second act follows other women from the girlfriend experiment as well as the actor Kurt Skye himself. It's an interesting concept overall. It talks a lot about love, how people fall in love, what it takes to maintain love, how people can really ever truly know each other, and I think the experiment itself is very interesting because this actor Kurt Skye, he hires different women to play the different needs in his life. So Mary becomes the emotional girlfriend, he has an angry girlfriend, he has a maternal girlfriend, he has a girlfriend who he hires just to sit in the room with him and not speak while he stares and contemplates out the window. So it's very interesting the experiment that's being done and what eventually happens with that experiment. I would say the writing in this book is wonderful. I was immediately pulled into Mary's kind of train of thought and experience and I thought in the first act like wow this is going to be a new favorite. The weird thing was in the second act we go from a first person narration from Mary to a third person narration where we're looking at the different individuals involved in the girlfriend experiment and I did not find that section to be as strong as Mary's narration. I really just was here for Mary. And the parts where Mary and Kurt are interacting, those were good, those were fine, but I didn't have as much interest in the other characters who were taking place in the girlfriend experiment. So I would say that the second act was not as successful as the first and final acts, and that has a lot to do with why I gave it a four instead of a five. But overall, I do love Lacey's writing. 
I thought it was just very beautiful and very moving. Next up, I started and finished Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton. She is the author of The Luminaries, which won, I think, the Booker, oh yes, Booker Prize winning author of The Luminaries. I can read. This book is published by FSG. I pre-ordered it. I think I previously said that. I was really interested in a literary thriller because I've been reading a lot of kind of just contemporary literary fiction and I wanted something that was going to pull me in and keep me held. And this definitely did that. I gave this five stars. I loved it. I loved the setting being in New Zealand. I don't read a lot of books that are set in that area, so I thought it was an interesting look at the people who live on this little tiny island. This is a dark, tense literary thriller. We follow a guerrilla gardening group called Burnham Wood. The group essentially plants on empty land, often without the consent of the owner, and the de facto leader of the group, Mira Bunting, discovers a plot of land in Thorndike, and she recognizes that as an opportunity to do the biggest kind of illegal planting that they've ever done. Meanwhile, her best friend Shelly Noakes is kind of struggling with the fact that she wants to leave the group and she no longer wants to take part in it. There's also a billionaire shady character who may or may not have caused a natural disaster that affected Thorndike as a whole. And there's also a character called Tony Gallo who ends up wanting to discover what kind of shady business this billionaire has going on in Thorndike's backyard. I loved this book. I felt that the first act was a little slow, but really we're just kind of getting to know the characters. And so it's kind of necessary to kind of have it slowly build to where it eventually goes, which is madness. Madness. I felt pulled in. I was so interested in these characters. They were so beautifully crafted to the point that one moment you're like, I hate this person, and the next second you're like, I must protect this sweet little baby. They were so multidimensional, they felt like real, actual human people, which you can't say for every novel. The power struggle between Mira and Shelley felt completely authentic, and the character of Tony, who's kind of a know-it-all and kind of a jerk in the beginning, he redeems himself in a very big way, and even he becomes lovable. I really liked the structure of this book. I liked the three distinct acts, which was kind of like the introduction and the discovery of Thorndike, some of the background on the characters, the beginning of the planting and movement in terms of the plot, and then the second act ends with something completely insane, and the third act just downward spirals from there into complete insanity. And at the end, that ending, I felt like I was punched in the face and I didn't know what to do with myself. I was, I was astonished to say the least. It was spectacular. It was super gripping and I can't say enough good things about this. It makes me want to read way more literary thrillers. This is a new favorite. This was not predictable. This took me in places I didn't even know it was going. And I loved it. You know the whole time that something's up. You know that there's shady people involved and you know that it can only end badly, but you don't know how badly. And yet so wonderfully. I loved this. Next up, I read Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. I bought this in hardcover because I had such high expectations of this book. This is published by Double Day. I gave it a 3.25 which means I'm not mad that I read it, but I didn't love it or even really enjoy it all that much. This is supposedly literary horror. I didn't feel that it was horrifying. It was a little spooky, a little creepy in some areas, but not necessarily what I think of when I think of horror, although maybe this is just what literary horror is. So this book follows Mackenzie. She is a young Cree woman who has moved away from home after the death of her grandmother. I think it's her grandmother. They call her something else throughout the book, but I'm pretty sure it's her grandmother. While she's gone, her family is continuing to kind of suffer tragedies, and Mackenzie is just turning a blind eye to everything at home. She doesn't want to deal with the grief and the sadness that's kind of consuming her family. But then she begins to have nightmares that feel very real, and she begins bringing things back from her nightmares into real life, including at one point a crow's head. 
a head of a crow in her hand. And at that point, she knows something's up, something's wrong, and she needs to go back home to her family to get their help. I really enjoyed reading about Mackenzie's family life once she finally goes back home. It was a very warm, inviting, kind of enveloping life. She has all these family members who just love her and miss her and want her nearby, and she for some reason just resists asking for their help and accepting their love. And that's kind of the, that's the real struggle throughout this story. I would say the main thing in this story is not the spooky stuff happening, although on the surface it is. The main issue is that Mackenzie's grieving and she wants to do it alone. She doesn't want to do it with community, which ends up being what she actually needs. I do think the writing in this was very good, very vivid. I could imagine everything she was writing as it was happening. And I think it would be an excellent movie. I would love to see this turned into a movie. I think it would be even a more effective horror as a movie. But as a book, it was just kind of okay. I did enjoy this book, but again, I think it'd be a great movie. I did read online that this was adapted from a short story, so that could be why some of the timeline felt kind of wonky and muddled. Perhaps that's why I didn't feel that it was as effective as it could have been. Lastly, I read Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. This book really took me by surprise. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. This is published by Avid Reader Press. I got it as a book of the month book in February of 2022. I like that they print that on there. This is literary fiction. It is kind of dark, but I also found it to be very funny and very reflective. We follow a nameless narrator. She is a tenured professor at a small liberal arts college, and her husband is being accused of having several illicit relationships with students. The school has recently put into effect a law forbidding student-teacher relationships, but prior to that law, he did have a lot of dalliances with students. The narrator and her husband have an agreement where they both can kind of be outside of their marriage, and they, they're fine with that. The book really goes into how his affairs are affecting her, and it goes into her views on power and desire and what she really believes in terms of those women making those allegations against her husband. Not always the most up-to-date views from this character. She's definitely more of an old-school feminist. She really values sexual freedom over most anything. She doesn't have the most up-to-date views on the power dynamic between a student and a professor. Also in this book is Vladimir Vladinsky. He is a new tenured track professor at the college and he has a wife who is a memoirist and his entrance into the story really sparks this obsession and desire from our narrator where she cannot stop thinking about him and she begins writing. He is like her muse. This book is really an exploration of a vain, aging woman reflecting on power dynamics, desire. Overall, this story was excellent. The writing was excellent. There were a lot of points in this book that I thought were quite funny, and I really liked seeing the narrator's thoughts and behavior around her students, her daughter, her husband, who she kind of has a confusing relationship with, and then of course Vladimir, who kind of represents everything that she wants to be, which is someone who's kind of young, sexual, desirable, powerful, and a great writer. She's written two books in the past and neither of them have been particularly successful, so I think she sees Vladimir as almost more of what she wants to be, rather than an object of desire, although she does desire him and she is obsessed with him. Maybe. I don't know where I'm getting that from. The ending of the book was a little strange. It felt kind of rushed and random, and that's why I rated this 4.5 stars instead of 5, despite enjoying it so much. I just kind of felt like the ending had nowhere else to go, and so the author kind of introduced this boop plot point, which was random and I don't know. It brought the narrator and her husband kind of closer together, so I feel like maybe it was for the greater good. I loved the academic setting. It made me want to go be a professor or a writer, and this book is specifically responsible for making me subscribe to the New York Review of Books. The narrator mentions it at one point, and I was like, 
I need that. I need, I need to be more up on my literary stuff. Something random from this book was that at one point the narrator states that Vladimir's favorite author is Norman Rush, and I realized that I have one of Norman Rush's most famous books, which is Mating, and so that was my next read. That's what I'm reading right now. I really like sometimes when my current read leads me to my next read. Well, that's it for April. Um, not my biggest reading month, but I did have some chunkier books I felt like I read. Please let me know if you've read any of these books, if you were excited to hear about any of these books. I think I had a comment that someone was excited about Burnham Wood. I'm gonna say read it. It was very good. I enjoyed it a lot. Anyways, that's it for the month of April. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, please. Thank you. If not again, it's okay. I'm not trying to be forceful here. Do whatever you wish. But I do hope that you have a great weekend. I hope that you read some wonderful things. Please let me know if you read any of these books and if you have any hot takes or cold takes. I'll take any kind of takes. Just leave them below in the comments. And that's really it from me. Thank you for watching. Peace out. <laughs>